So the next question we need to answer in this lecture is why did ex-Confederates choose Latin America specifically other, uh, over other parts of the world? And then why did they choose certain Latin American nations over others? Well, the short answer to the first part of that question is that ex-Confederates were recruited to Latin America by Latin American governments. During the mid 19th century, many Latin American countries were attempting to modernize their nations economically. Many countries had vast hinterland regions also that they hoped could be transformed into productive agricultural regions but they lacked the population numbers needed to transform these vast uncultivated areas. Countries like Brazil, Mexico, Belize, and Venezuela orchestrated aggressive immigration campaigns to entice people to come to their countries. They offered prospective immigrants very generous inducements, such as subsidizing the cost of transportation from the United States to their country, exemptions for military service, loans to offset startup costs for settlements, and they also allowed immigrants to bring agricultural implements with them duty-free. That is, countries did not charge a tax to bring these implements into the country. And this is a big deal because import tariffs, especially during the 19th century, were a big source of state revenue. Naturally, then, Latin American nations targeted ex-Confederates in the South. Former Confederates had owned or worked on plantations for generations and had advanced knowledge of how to cultivate cash crops such as cotton, sugar, and tobacco. In addition to agrarians, Latin American nations also sought out professionals, such as engineers and doctors. People who specialized in railroads were specifically recruited. And so these individuals were also needed to help modernize Latin American nations, and ex-Confederates fit this bill as well. For Confederates themselves, the inducements that Latin American nations offered were far too generous to pass up. On top of this, white Southerners had always been mystified by Latin America. Many had read books by naturalists such as Louis Agassiz, the Reverend Daniel P. Kidder, and others, which painted vivid images of the region and piqued the interest of white Southerners. But ex-Confederates also sent scouts to Latin American nations to investigate the conditions for themselves. For example, Ballard S. Dunn and James Fadden Gaston traveled to Brazil immediately after the Civil War to inspect conditions for Southern immigration there and to negotiate colonization schemes with the Brazilian government. Uh, at the conclusion of these surveys, men like Dunn published an account of their findings in the United States, which they used along with newspaper campaigns to recruit Southerners to their colonization ventures. And then there were also some people who had spent significant time in Latin America prior to the Civil War as part of filibustering campaigns in the 1850s in Central America or as part of their military service during the U.S.-Mexico War. Many Southerners also had business connections to Latin American nations that predated the Civil War, and therefore these individuals were very familiar with Latin American nations. So there was just more publicity and opportunity advertised to ex-Confederates in the South in relation to Latin America than other parts of the world. Plus, many ex-Confederates were at least moderately familiar with the region and believed that the transition, therefore, would be much easier than immigration to other non-English-speaking parts of the world. So now that we understand why ex-Confederates immigrated to Latin America at disproportionate rates than other parts of the world, I want to talk about why they cho chose certain nations over others. And I'm going to focus on Brazil and Mexico, because these are the two countries that really received the most Confederate expats. So let's begin with Brazil, which received the most ex-Confederate immigrants. As with other Latin American nations, the Brazilian government, and more specifically Emperor Dom Pedro II, played a huge role in encouraging the immigration of ex-Confederates to Brazil. Brazilian elites were interested in attracting white North Americans and Northern Europeans to their shores, in efforts to modernize and racially whiten their nation, which they considered a necessary measure to actually create a modern nation. Brazil was also interested in recruiting engineers, physicians, and other professionals that they could employ in building a more modern country. In the ex-Confederate population, Brazilians saw a group of white Anglo-Americans ready to do this, but they needed to convince Southerners to make the more than 5,000-mile-long trip to Brazil, which could be quite dangerous, especially during hurricane season. So to do so, the Brazilian government offered up thousands of acres in the Brazilian interior to prospective immigrants to establish settlements and cultivate cash crops. 
They also offered to front the entire cost for transportation to Brazil. Uh, once ex-Confederates had arrived, they also offered to pay for the cost of transportation to the settlement of their choice. If immigrants needed funds to purchase agricultural equipment, the Brazilian government agreed to front this cost as well. Basically, the Brazilian government agreed to front the cost for any and everything that immigrants needed to get their settlements up and running. However, these were loans, and the Brazilian government expected ex-Confederates to pay the government back in full with interest within six years. Next to these promises, the Brazilian government also promised that they would construct infrastructure, particularly railroad infrastructure, into the hinterland, which would make it easier for immigrant farmers to transport their cash crops to regional markets for sale. And this is all not to mention that Brazil still had legal African chattel slavery. So for former Confederates who wanted to reinvest themselves in the institution of slavery, Brazil was certainly a place to go versus other destinations in Latin America. Next to Brazil, there was Mexico, which received the second most amount of Confederate expats. Now, the Confederate expatriation movement to Mexico takes place within the unique context of the second French intervention in Mexico, which began in the early 1860s. The second French intervention in Mexico resulted from the reform war in Mexico that occurred during the 1850s between Mexican liberals and Mexican conservatives. The Mexican liberals led by Benito Juarez emerged victorious from the war, but throughout the war they had incurred a huge amount of debt to foreign nations, particularly European nations like England, Spain, and France. In the early 1860s, the Mexican government defaulted on these loans. And as a result, England, France, and Spain sent forces to Veracruz to seize the custom houses there. As I mentioned earlier, import duties were a big source of state revenue during the 19th century. So England, France, and Spain sent forces to these custom houses in Veracruz basically to collect these import duties as a way to force Mexico to pay their loans back. But France had other ideas. They decided to launch an invasion of Mexico in an attempt to take over the country. France was able to successfully port, push out the liberal government headed by Benito Juarez out of Mexico City and push him to the northern fringes of Mexico. And then a place of this government, uh, Napoleon III of France, who was very much interested via this invasion of reinvigorating the French colonial empire in the Americas, installed this man on the right here, Ferdinand Maximilian, who was an Archduke of Austria, as the new emperor of the new Mexican imperial government. Well, during the French intervention in Mexico, the U.S. Civil War was still raging, and Maximilian actually developed somewhat of a covert relationship with Confederates fighting mostly in the Western theater of the U.S. Civil War. He supported them and also sent them financial aid to some extent. Well, after the conclusion of the U.S. Civil War, Maximilian identified ex-Confederates as a ready source of immigration to his new empire, who could serve as an auxiliary military force, but could likewise help Mexico develop its industrial and agricultural infrastructure. And so he went about recruiting these people to come to Mexico. And one of those people who came was Matthew Fontaine Mari, the man that I have depicted here on the left. Now, Amari is a, a unique character. He was a pretty famous scientist in the 1840s and 1850s. He was from Virginia. At one time, he was head of the Naval Observatory, and he was most famous for charting the Gulf Stream current. Well, when the Civil War broke out, being from Virginia, he sided with the Confederacy. And the Confederate government sent him to Europe as a purchasing agent to purchase ships and other large munitions for the Confederate war effort. Well, while he was there, he developed a pretty good relationship with Napoleon III and Maximilian. And so when the offer to immigrate to Mexico was on the table, Mari did not hesitate. He went to Mexico instead of going back to Virginia, um, in particular because he was feared that he would be thrown in jail for his part in the rebellion. But together with Maximilian, Mari devised a generous immigration contract for migrants. The contract offered land and tax exemptions for the first year of residence to immigrants who intended to make Mexico their permanent home. Immigrants were also exempted from military service for five years, granted religious freedom, and allowed to bring agricultural implements, machines, working tools, and anything else that immigrants felt they needed to establish profitable settlements into the country, custom house, and transit duty free. 
Mari's contract also stipulated that immigrants could bring laborers into the country. And basically what this meant was that if former Confederates could convince former slaves to come into the country, Mari and the imperial government would recognize that these laborers were bound to ex-Confederate immigrants, basically allowing ex-Confederate immigrants a way to extend slavery in Mexico after its abolition in the U.S. Uh, South. And this was a big deal because the Mexican Constitution stipulated explicitly that any enslaved person who set foot in Mexico was automatically free. So via this immigration contract, Mari and Maximilian were basically uh, reversing this. Mari's uh, immigration contract, though, also gave ex, uh, ex-Confederates a pathway to not necessarily enslave, but definitely bind Mexican peasants or indigenous people to them in what they termed labor apprenticeships. And again, this wasn't necessarily slavery, but it bound these people to immigrants for what was an indeterminate amount of time and really restricted their movement. <clears throat> in addition to this immigration contract, Mari also played an important role in establishing a recruiting network in the United States that he hoped would inspire Southerners to immigrate to Mexico by the thousands. Mari opened up recruitment offices in most states throughout the South and even some in the North. In addition to this, with a subsidy of 10,000 pesos from Maximilian, he set up an English language newspaper, the Mexican Times in Mexico City, which functioned as a propaganda machine for Maximilian's government an additional way to advertise Mexico to Southerners. Henry Watkins Allen, a former Confederate general and wartime governor of Louisiana, served as the paper's editor-in-chief until his death in 1866. But by early 1866, through Mari's efforts, U.S. newspapers confirmed that he was having great success in recruiting Southerners to Mexico. The Richmond Examiner reported on February 2, 1866, that a number of ex-Confederates had arrived in Mexico City and that, quote, some have families with them, some have stock and farming utensils, and all have the determination to go to work somewhere and support the empire, end quote. But not all Southerners believe immigration to Mexico or Brazil is the best idea. Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee actually advised Southerners not to immigrate to Brazil and Mexico. Others thought that going to Brazil in order to retie themselves to slavery was foolish given the steps Brazil was making, uh, taking already in the 1860s to gradually phase out the institution. Nonetheless, the recruitment efforts of the Brazilian and Imperial Mexican government were great enough that they were able to bring the bulk of ex-Confederate immigrants who ventured to Latin America to their nations. Ex-Confederates who went abroad of the main bulk of the immigrants certainly did their part in advertising Brazil and Mexico as the best possible destination in Latin America to immigrate to. 